Hey YouTube, this is your captain speaking from Squirrel Acres in a hellhole of a shop right now because I've been thrashing out here pretty hard. In the meantime, uh, this was a good time. I'm getting it torn down. We got a ride coming at Good Evening Ranch in two weeks. And I kind of lost my fire over the winter and didn't really do anything but stare at it. So uh, one thing led to another. We went, as we call it, full effing squirrel on this thing. Uh, while it's down to the bare bones, this is a good time to actually get a detailed look at some things. So let's go for it. So before we get started, the best part of this next section of the video is you get to look at the tractor instead of my ugly mug. And that's always a plus, right? Right. Let's see if I can hold the camera the right direction at least. All right, there we go. So this is the B1 bomber. Uh, you've seen it out there. You've seen my lack of driving abilities. Okay. In my defense, I can hold my own, but I'm not a big uh, a big hill bomber guy. Uh, I had a Wheel Horse 654, very mild trail rig. Um, that was my first one, probably. It's coming up on three years now. Uh, that went over backwards without warning on me, and it was pretty violent. And, you know, I just turned 48 years old. So uh, for you young punks, go for it. For my old ass, uh, I'm not into... Uh, eating straw, eating uh, my food through a straw because I wanted to try something stupid. So no, I'm not a big hill bomber. All right, so this was a B100 complete tractor that I bought for 200 bucks and got burned on it because the connecting rod was in about 100 pieces in the pan. So I said, what be better way to redeem myself and feel better about myself? Build the thing into something I could just beat the living tar out of all the time. So here we go. There's really not, folks, there's really not a lot you have to do to these things. Uh, I am very fortunate that I have the skills and tools and equipment and abilities to go kind of crazy on stuff. You don't need to do that. Start with a good heavy duty tractor, uh, preference of a Sears or a wheel horse, because they're pretty much built like tanks. Um, don't even bother going out there if you're not going to put a good set of tires on it. Uh, the, your next mod would definitely be to lock the rear axle. Uh, that is a danger situation, actually, because when these are unlocked, if you are to slide on a hill and one tire gets traction and the other one loses it, that tire will spin the opposite direction or just lock up altogether, and you basically, for all intents and purposes, have no brakes. Lock them up, folks. If you don't know how, get on YouTube, ask around. Okay, back to the B1. Let's start at the front. Factory front end, factory spindles, this is all B100 stuff. I can't remember if these spindles came off this tractor or another horse, but you want the ones with the bolts on. If you get the ones with the little clips on here, um, unless you're just riding around some mild trails, you're gonna get in trouble. So drill and tap them or find a good set of spindles, find a way to secure those, those wheels on there. Uh, the top all have snap rings. I went ahead and drilled and tapped it and put a washer on here. Um, that's probably not as big of a situation unless you were to have something chopping down right here and hitting it. Um, I just did it to do it uh, a little bit safer. Um, tie rods. These are actually the factory tie rods that I cut the ends off of and drilled and tapped and just put a, put some economy, three eighths economy rod ends on there. That's it. Spindles, wheel horse spindle, you got to brace them. If you're going to start popping wheelies and bashing into things like a caveman, you will bust the spindles off of a wheel horse. So that's it. It kind of conquered two things here. This helps brace this part of the spindle on that bend and also helps brace the steering arm itself. Um, I've seen these steering arms bust loose from the spindle. That's no good either. Okay, um, there is... No chassis bracing, no frame bracing up in the front. And these things are two pieces of angle iron, basically, and might have been suitable for a cow fence. Uh, they flex. This thing is a potato chip, but so far it's not presenting any problems. Underneath, did a bolt-on skid plate. This was a common wheel horse issue. Right here, they bust the transmission out and things fall apart in there. So I have a bolt-on skid plate so I can still access transmission bolts. All right. We'll get back to the creepy crawler belt system here in a minute. Plenty of coverage on that. The rear, everything is pretty much stock. This is a eight pinion, one and an eighth axle, eight speed. This was the this was the big daddy 
cream of the crop for the wheel horses. Um, I actually, I highly recommend if you do these to go ahead when you lock them up is to weld the pinions. The wheel horses, you can flip them. I actually have flipped pinions in this. It's not presenting any problems, but I'm keeping an eye on it. Um, that's, I mean, chassis wise, that's it. I don't have a lot of uh, additional bracing or anything on here. Uh, just fabricated these this past week, some tree kickers. Uh, a lot of guys don't run them, a lot of guys do. You will get a sapling sucked in here between your, your, your running board and, and your tire and you're gonna sit there. So uh, let's get to the other add-ons. We got a front bumper, pretty heavy duty. It's packed full of concrete, it's been poured. Uh, a little extra weight on the nose. Uh, seat pan and seat, everything's just stock. We got an upper belt guard. We got a back bumper, and I have two utility boxes uh, on there, two ammo cans. One of them has spare parts and tools. Folks, you need them on a tractor, all right? We're doing stuff we're not supposed to do. The other one is for the beverage of my choice, which everybody knows what it usually is, depending on where we ride. Some places don't allow that. We got a foot throttle set up. We got a lower belt guard. We got a hood, just a basic cheap Amazon LED. And I punched some holes in it to let some air out because this oppie gets hotter than a son of a gun. Uh, back to the tractor. Rear mounted gas tank. I think those were on the newer model tractors. They used to be up here. Well, boom. There we go. We got twin fuel systems. I've got a shut off here and I've got a shut off on the upper tank. And a T in the line can hold uh, just a tick under five gallons of gas on this. And uh, that oppie uses it, believe me. Um... Let's see, let's go back to the belt drive here. Um, I'm not even going to do a lot of coverage on this. This is the Creepy Crawler patented system, semi-patented. If y'all know Creepy Crawler, you know what's going on here. He's had years ahead of everybody else for experience and knows how to make these work. This will give you more belt wrap and less chance of belt slippage. You don't have to be yanking back on your clutch pedal with your heel and stuff. These things work. Got the Holy Pulley Mod. I believe that started with... Uh, with Mr. Studebaker, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, these are GM idler pulleys for a serpentine belt system. This is just a little stop that I added. Uh, let's see, I did weld the clutch arm just to give it a little more, a little more uh, uh, bang for the buck, I guess. I don't have to worry about that section. Uh, this is also covered in another one of my videos. Uh, the Creepy Crawler belt system's covered everywhere. Um, this is actually a mule drive pulley. The pulley is damn near identical size and has a much heavier bearing in it. Uh, that's a good cheap band mod. Uh, Creepy Crawler actually does some nice pulleys that are greasable and serviceable for here and here. You might want to check them out. Uh, alternator. This is a John Deere alternator. I believe it was on a 420 Deere. Uh, this thing will crank out probably 15 amps at idle and it will put out like 30 amps at like 2,000 RPMs. It's a hell of a charging system. It is tiny. And then I run a regulator. You can't see it, but there's a regulator rectifier. That is a, uh, that is a Kohler CH series rectifier. Uh, real easy. I don't know the part number. Find the one with all the spikes on it. It's a 25 or 30 amp, three wires, simple as it can get. Let's see, what else? We've got dual throttles. We'll have the foot throttle down there, and I've got a hand throttle, which is set up right here. And that's nice if I need to just bump the idle up, like so, to either warm it up or if I'm doing some crawls uh, where I don't want to be farting around with the throttle. Uh, Engine-wise, let's see. This has also been covered. I covered a lot of uh, porting videos and a lot of oppie swap videos, uh, vertical to horizontal. So we won't get into all the details. If you want, go, uh, go ahead and uh, look on the other YouTube videos for that. But it's basically, it's a 20.5 horse pressure lube Briggs vertical, 46 cubic inch. Um, I bought a horizontal oil pan and sump and a horizontal side cover with a pump from Mobros. If you know Mobros, uh, they hooked me up with that. Uh, it's got billet, ARC billet rods, ARC billet adjustable flywheel. 
Uh, it's got Briggs uh, AVS Model 28 pistons in it. Very light, very short skirt with a very thin ring package. Less drag. Um, it's got a, uh, what was the name of the cam? It was a Precision 212 Alt Cam. And I run it one full tooth advanced for a little more bottom end. It is a wicked cam. Uh, got a basic oil filter relocation kit. Filter is over there. And this is just a little power steering cooler. Uh, universal one from Napa. Uh, this thing in the summertime, you know, these aren't designed to run off idle. They're supposed to be at 3,000 plus RPMs all the time when you're mowing. So your, your cooling lacks a little bit when you're doing all this idling around. The oil would get so hot in this that it would turn black in one ride and my oil pressure at idle would actually drop to zero. That's how thin the oil was getting. Oil cooler fixed it. Uh, what else is in the engine? Obviously, it's been fully ported and relieved. Flow bench tested and verified. Got a custom header on it with a home-built muffler. Pumper carb, this is also covered. It's just a Kohler. Uh, I also believe that's a CH series uh, 27 horse carburetor. It's got a accelerator pump on it and I cover a bunch of mods with that. Uh, just a basic air cleaner. And this is a cake pan. If you hear people refer to this as the B1 Baker, that's because this is a cake pan. That's basically just keeping water and stuff from splashing out. Here's another reason for the B1 Baker. That is a pizza screen and it works. If you bash a tree into it, you are going to ruin it. That's why you buy like a five pack of them for like 10 bucks off the jungle site. Um, geez. I don't know what else we got. One inch spacers back here. We've got a wide offset rim, uh, factory rim with the, I guess you'd, for lack of a better term, a retaining, uh, a retaining ring on them. I run probably half a pound of air in these and have not debeated one. Uh, the hubs are the heavy duty hubs that would be on the newer wheel horses, like the 520s and stuff, uh, for an inch and an eighth axle, and it has two set screws on it. Another creepy crawler trick, green Loctite, folks, Loctite sleeve retainer. The stock wheel horses had problems with these hubs moving and breaking loose all the time. Clean, 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 squeaky clean, Loctite sleeve retainer, green, I think it's like 620 or something. I don't know. You can look that up. You can handle that. And uh, those hubs ain't moving. I don't know. We've got a kill switch, which is very nice to have. We've got a phone charger. And a voltmeter down here. I got to keep my damn hand out of the way here. Uh, got a, I actually run a stock clutch spring. Uh, no need for a trampoline spring and break your leg. Uh, put that up on your highest point here, if I can film it, on your pivot. The further out you get that, the more force it's going to put on it. Don't bother hooking it down here. Hook it way out on the end as far as you can, preferably on your clutch rod. Uh, yes, you can see I also run a clutch brake on a single pedal because in a panic situation, I only have one pedal to worry about. Stomp on that and everything goes dead. What else we got? Ah, everybody with a wheel horse knows that they like to ingest water into the transaxle or transmission. Uh, I actually think wheel horse uh, transmissions actually have a way to make their own water. Sure seems like it. That is a toilet flapper valve, the old school ball style valve. Put that on there, cut the top off of it, boom, you're done. Now this is not going to seal on the bottom. This is keeping water from running down the stick and going into trans, and it will. If you submerge this, you're gonna get water in it. Change your fluids, folks. Keep an eye on them. Let's see, one more thing here, front tires. Stock wheels, PGN bearings, um, they seem to be holding up all right. Uh, no big trailer hub craziness up here. I just kind of kept it basic. Um, I'm the guy that likes to keep the thing as much tractor as possible. Obviously, it's starting to get away from that, but I'm just not ready to build a full-on machine and put a tractor hood on it and call it a tractor. Um, these have about three gallons each of fluid in them. Got to get fluid in your tires or that thing is going to be up off the ground on anything even semi-steep. So there you have it.
Okay, folks, so there you have it, the B1 in a nutshell, or a couple of cow fence frame rails. You know, it's amazing what these things will hold up to. Um, hey, it's shout out time. I've uh, been doing this for, I don't know, I think this is year three. Uh, could not have done this or certainly would have been struggling a hell of a lot more if it wasn't for the help of a lot of people and ball busting, of course. Uh, they have brought me from a utility tractor to ride around and hopefully drag a deer out with. Uh, they, they've gotten me on a level that I never thought I could, could attain at, at this age, for sure, uh, and this ability level. So this all started with, uh, with Bear, Bear410 on TikTok. I don't believe he's a YouTuber. Um, he bought a tractor from me. And we started chit-chatting, and one thing led to another, and all hell broke loose. Uh, introduced me to Devers, Mr. Be Destructive. He's all over YouTube. Check out his content. He's got some good stuff, and he's a hell of a character, too. Uh, Devers got me hooked up with some pretty important names, some big names in the tractor community, at least out here in the, uh, in the East a little bit. And they have been an absolute world of help. Pretty cool knowing these guys and watching their YouTube footage. And, and they were really a hell of an inspiration and thought I would never get to meet them. And how cool would it be to get to take a ride with them? And now we talk almost daily. Uh, Mr. Creepy Crawler, Tom, you guys know who Creepy Crawler is. You know who Red Zero Two is, Mr. Top Tractor Challenge himself. Uh, and Mr. Studebaker, who is now getting ready to go on a big journey. We will let him fill you all in on that. I know I'm missing more. Um, those boys out in Kentucky, uh, give her beans 97 on here. Those guys beat down some tractors like I ain't never seen. They ride a lot and they ride hard. You need some durability tested, send it out to him. If he don't break it, it's unbreakable. The guy's crazy. There's so many other folks out there. And I just, from the bottom of my heart, want to say thank you all for all the help and all the good times getting my now 48 year old ass out here on a tractor and just having an absolute blast with it. Uh, folks, it doesn't take a lot to really make one of these capable. Start with a good machine. If you're not a, if you don't have the fabrication and, and, uh, and, and skills and have welders and cutters and all that, then start with a good machine because you really don't need to do much at all. If you start with a, with a wore out pan frame pile, by all means, go for it, but you're going to have a lot of problems if you don't have the ability to do this stuff yourself. Uh, so start with something heavy duty. Um, you want a garden tractor, not a lawn mower, basically. Just much, much, much heavier duty. These things are rated for ground engaging equipment like plows and discs and stuff like that. Um, they're going to hold up. I mean, these things are in the Sears are damn near bomb, bomb proof. Um, doesn't take a whole lot. Lock that rear end up in these things. Put a good set of tires on it. If you got a wheel horse, you're gonna be bracing spindles. Uh, I don't have serious experience. I don't know what it takes to make those work. I don't think much more than a wheel horse, but you don't have to have all the fancy doodads and, and all the add-ons and trick shit on there and everything. Um, I'm very fortunate to have those skills and abilities and come from a life of, of hot rod engine building and stuff. That's the reason for this. There's guys out there, if you watch these videos, there's guys out there with stock 212 Predators that'll do just fine in 90% of the situations we ride in. You don't need all this steam. Is it fun? Oh, hell yeah, it's a lot of fun. But if you don't have the money and you don't have the time or the experience to devote to going crazy with these things, don't let that discourage you. You don't have to do all this crap, okay? Put some tires on, lock them up, Go and have some fun. Captain 315, out of here till next time.